Blog Talk Radio. Sometimes the first round can be, you know, a surprise and and maybe kind of shock you on some series. Other times it can be lackluster. And, and, you know, I think it's pretty simple to say that this one has been fairly lackluster in the way of how many games it's going to take to be done. Now, that's not to say that there hasn't been some some competitive and, and really tight games and stuff like that because there has there definitely has obviously Toronto once again losing <laughs> their first round they just or I'm not not the first round don't don't kill me people from Canada I'm not talking about the first round I'm talking about the first game for whatever reason the first game is just a huge jinx just a humongous jinx for the Raptors. But they're all but done. You know what I mean? In fact, um, you know, they've won three in a row. And right now, they're up 28-7. to seven. Also tonight, Brooklyn and Philly. That's another game where you thought, wow, okay. Or not a game, but the series where they, they got up. And you were like, oh, wow, they won the, okay, this is going to be a hell of a series. And then all of a sudden, it kind of goes back to, um, what we kind of thought it would be. Like I said, some of these games have been really, really good. Some of them not so much. We did get Golden State kind of, you know, getting shocked in a variety of ways. I mean, losing a game, not the biggest deal, but at home and also the lead they gave up. So we're going to dig into this stuff. Obviously, tonight at 830, there's a huge, huge game. And this is the series to keep an eye on Denver and San Antonio is all, all tied up and um, like I said I'm just uh, I'm excited for tonight a little later tonight um, what we're going to do is we're going to recap all this stuff here we're going to talk it through we are definitely going to talk it through and uh, then we're going to sink our teeth into next round that's right That's right. I mean, most of this stuff is either decided or it will be very soon, just like right now going on. I mean, Toronto's going to win this game. I got news for you. Toronto's winning this one. If they don't win, there's something really, really wrong. Um, So we're going to we're going to take a look at the second round and give our thoughts and predictions and whatnot. Like I said, we could get it could start Saturday potentially could start Saturday. So we'll get into that. No doubt about it. If this is your first time listening to the NBA playoff banter podcast, welcome. It streams live right here on blogtalkradio.com forward slash rope a dope radio. It streams live at archives. You can listen to it right now. 
If you want to listen to it on the go, 646 381 Maybe you're stuck in traffic on the West Coast. Maybe you're going to go grocery shopping. you got to go to the club, go for a run. Maybe you're in a truck right now overnight. Maybe you're on a road trip. Take the show with you, 646-381-4990. Like I said, so the NBA Playoff Banter Podcast, it falls under the rope dope Radio Podcast, and it's just not here at Blog Talk Radio. You can uh, run into it on iTunes. If you rate and review the the. You know, the the podcast there, that'd be great. You can also find it, and this is under the Rope Dope Radio podcast. We're talking about this banter NBA playoff podcast. You could find it under Stitcher, Spricker. Tune in, tune in. We get a lot of listens from and also Player FM. But you can find us in a variety of places beyond that as well. We're also part of the Grueling Truth sports podcast network and that can be found on itunes spricker you can also check it out on iheart radio you can become a member there subscribe there and on spotify if you have siri or alexa you can use spotify or tune in and tell them hey go to the grueling truth sports podcast network pick out the nba playoff banter podcast okay um also you can listen to the show right there at the gruelingtruth.net. That's the gruelingtruth.net. You can listen to a variety of shows, whether it's basketball, football, baseball, boxing, everything in between. Same with articles, right? I do a weekly boxing and college football, college basketball throughout the year anyway. A couple of NBA prediction articles as well. And while you're at it, right from the gruelingtruth.net, you can link uh, right to mybookie.ag. If you're looking to, uh, you know, put down a wager or three or four. One more thing before we dive deep into the first round and also preview the second round of these NBA um, series. I got a deal for you. It has something to do with direct TV now. It's a two and one. Okay, so I'm going to establish the direct TV now streaming service, and then I'm going to give you an additional deal. Okay, so right now, if you're thinking about cutting the cable, thinking about cutting the cord, or you have and you're not quite happy with what you're getting, I got a deal for you. I cut the uh, cord back in August. I gave myself about four to five weeks to see which cable package I was going to go with as far as, you know, streaming package. And I found DirecTV now. to So this is kind of like right now we're talking NBA playoffs. Well, what do you need to watch the NBA playoffs. You need ESPN and you need TNT. Sure, there's some games on ABC. Sure, the finals are on ABC, but that's a little ways away. We're talking five weeks away, six weeks away. So this deal right here, the packages start as as low as $50 a month. The plus in max packages have HBO included. So there's your Game of Thrones fix too. We got the NBA we got uh, the draft coming up this weekend for the NFL. we got the Game of Thrones. You need cable for this, okay? So there's, you could try a seven-day free trial. Like I said, the plans start at $50 a month. Seven-day free trial. There's no annual contract. You can stream it anywhere, your smart TV, your smartphone, your tablet. They have the cloud DVR. For the boxing fans out there or people, People that like Showtime, it's only $11 a month. Like I said, HBO is already included. And here's the kicker. So that's just straight up $50 a month, right? But here's the kicker. If you prepay four months, so that's $200. If you prepay four months, you get an Apple TV fifth generation 4K thrown in for free. Now, that's regularly priced at $179. So you got four months of cable including a free Apple TV 4K, fifth generation. Maybe you have a fourth or a third generation Apple TV. Maybe it's not 4K. Maybe you got an old Roku. It's a pretty damn good deal. You prepay four months. That'll bring you all the way through the draft, through free agency, through the finals. And then in the summer, you can cut the cord again if you want. Anyway, Direct TV now, give it a try, okay? I'm going to go ahead and bring in Marshall, my co-host, into the – and see what the hell's he's doing. What's going on, Marshall? How the heck are you, buddy? 
I'm good, man. Just uh, relaxing. Uh, done coaching for the school year, so life is now uh, just go to school and leave when the bell rings. So it's a little, uh, a little easier schedule, one may say. But uh, I got about a, a month or so of no coaching, and it starts back up over the summer. So I can't complain, man. Just watching a bunch of playoffs and baseball, and yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Um, I guess to start off. You know, you, yeah. you summed up a, a a ton of series, and you left off one, I believe, as I was listening. Um, well, I didn't was, want to dig uh, into too much, you know. I oh, wanted sure, to let sure, it sure. marinate. Um, you didn't mention um, Oklahoma City and Portland. And, again, I, I'm a Warriors fan. That's my number one squad. I've been a fan of them since 2008 when uh, – the Mavericks were upset by Golden State, so I've been a fan for a long time. I'm not a bandwagon guy. But uh, my second squad has been Portland. I've always liked their players. I've liked the team. I like the arena. Kind of like the whole vibe. And I remember when we were picking our series in the first show, I was like, man, you know, they lost Nurkish like literally a, right. a week or two before the playoffs on a, on a freak knee injury. Um, that guy was clearly their number three best player. Um, I was kind of like, damn, like, you know, I'm not sure how they're going to be able to bounce back from that injury. And, my God, uh, tonight they got all the chances, and I hope they do to wrap this thing up. Um, I'm very happy. I, I'm, I'm happy as hell. But if you would have told me this series would be 3-1, to one, I'd be a little surprised, you know, because everyone in the yeah. world, you know, had been picking – Oklahoma said, you're at least making it a, a series of more competitiveness, but Portland has done a great job. Um, you know, most NBA people would say, okay, name me the best t- two players in the series. And an automatic response would be uh, Westbrook and Paul George. And that may be the case for some people, but that has not been playing out to be true in the series at all. The best players in the series have been Lillard and McCollum and the numbers aren't even close. You know, the, this Westbrook love that most people have, sure, the guy plays hard and all of this, but his shooting percentage numbers have just continued to be abysmal for another playoff round. You know, again, it's, 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 he's one of the rare athletes where the guy gets loved by almost everyone, but, dude, if, if you are a regular player that maybe didn't have quite the charisma personality that he did, He'll be like, dude, you, you know, if you're cold, you should probably look to pass the ball or shoot the ball. Yeah. Willard and McCollum have done great this series. But Westbrook, I mean, he's chucking up, you know, 30 shots only making 10 of them, and, and the team is struggling. And, you know, Paul George, again, has not been similar to himself um, after, you know, having a season where he was a top three MVP vote. So um, hats off to Portland. Um, again, I think their coach is one of the best three in the NBA. I think he's done that job there again as well. Um, props to McCollum and Lillard who have done their job uh, to lead their team. Um, those guys have been averaging close to 60 points a game this series for me, maybe realistically about 50, but in a couple of key games they've dropped 60 together as well. Uh, Lillard had, I believe it was game three, he scored 25 points in the third quarter, which is something you normally don't see at all. Uh, so I just want to yeah. kind of start start off on a positive note. Um, I, I'm, I'm happy that I did not see the series being a 3-1 series uh, and Portland have a chance at home tonight to wrap this thing up. And, I mean, odds are – I feel pretty good. I, unless something changes, I like Portland's chance this night to wrap this baby up. Uh, what's your kind of overall take on, I would say, part one? Does Portland surprise you? And part two, I mean, literally, what the hell has kind of gone on with Westbrook and Paul George? Because they have been outplayed, and they've not been the two best uh, players in this series, Chris. Question. Um, yeah, Westbrook's kind of – at times he does go into I'm going to shoot too much mode. Um, you could understand that two years ago, um, but, you know, or maybe even at the beginning of the year until they got um, Paul George. You know, I didn't realize how, like, at the be- like we, we did the show, and it's already been like 11 days since the show, something like that, because – you know, we were going to jump on maybe early if, if if two or three or four series out of the eight were, you know, 
uh, maybe maybe two two more two twos right now, we probably would have jumped in earlier. But you know, sure. we kind of just let it play out. That's kind of how we do because it's like just to come on and say, well, it basically played out how we thought. Okay, we'll see you next week. Doesn't really make sense. Um, but I mistake. I did not, not realize that Paul George had had a shoulder. That shoulder was still bugging him. Like two days before the game, he said, I'm just now starting to be able to um, lift my shoulder. <laughs> and I saw that first game and I'm like, wow, dude, you, what is going on? And, and it just, did, I thought he had been beyond it. And it was just like, shit happens. No big deal. He's going to be fine. I had no clue that he had that issue. So at least we can give Paul George a little, like a minor bit of a break, I'd say, because, you know, if you're not lifting your shoulder um, and you're going to try to shoot, that's not a good look. Not any of that, but, I mean, his last game, he got to the line a bunch, you know, damn near, well, not a triple-double. I think he had, like, six assists, but he had 32 and over 10 boards. I can't remember exactly what it was. But like you said, Westbrook just in general, you know, that's been like they they need him to you know he, he's a bit of well I shouldn't say he's a bit he's a volume shooter no doubt about it um and what the hell it happened again this week there's these ads that just pop up that's so weird that one actually kind of scared me Marshall I was kind of like oh god what is that um all right sorry <laughs> but yeah when you look at it dude. It is pretty damn bad. I mean, we know he's not going to shoot well from three, like, you know, in general. But this guy, he didn't – I don't think in the last game he took a three-point shot, which kind of makes sense because then you're like, hey, dude, at least you're figuring it out. Like, something's going on. And he did play well in game two. I mean, he had 33-11 and and shot 50% from the field and actually hit some threes, but – then you, so the first game he shot 24% uh, just overall. Second game, 25%. Now he bounced back a little bit in the, the, the other, you know, the last game. But, yeah, man, his his shot has just kind of fallen off. And, and you kind of look take a look around at what other people are doing on the squad. And I don't know, man. It, I, I really thought that they were starting to click. Um it is a little bit – I mean, Schroeder's played well off the bench, or at least he did um, in the last game. But a little surprised that that's where we're at. I really thought this thing would be 2-2. Now, they do need Marshall to close it out tonight, though. You know what I mean? Because if they go back, that crowd gets involved. It's another chunk of days for – and I believe uh, Paul George is feeling better in general now. But I think maybe sure. maybe I would have – reconsidered if maybe I'm not going to sit here and say, Oh, I definitely would have not picked him then. Cause that's just not me. I'm not going to sit there and go back at it. Cause I could have just done that, that much more research. I was aware of him being banged up, but I didn't realize after that first game, you know, he was like, Hey dude, like, yeah, I'm hurt. Like I could barely lift my shoulder. So, um, yeah, I'm a little surprised. I thought it would be two, two, um, but like I said, they got to win tonight or not tonight, but yeah, it is tonight, isn't it? They got to win the night. Yeah. I, I do believe they should close it out because otherwise then I do see that going game seven. You know what I mean? I, I think that would go game seven because I think they get home, you know, they, they win and push it so that I'm definitely, I definitely think that it would go game seven if they don't win tonight. Um, real quick, just kind of breezing through some of these sweeps um, before we, you know, kind of sink our teeth into a, a couple other of these ones, especially the Spurs and uh, and Denver. And it's so funny with that. Like, their backcourt now is just young and pretty good. <laughs> and it's just like, here we go again with these damn Spurs, dude. They, they just can develop guys over and over and over. But anyway, Toronto – um, still handling business as we speak. You know, whatever it is, that first game in series just freaks them out. And I think it's just in their head now, Marshall. But after that, you know, game three was pretty solid. It was pretty close. But you had a 
82 and 107, 85. That uh, game three was a low scoring game, so that helped them out. But um, it's been all Raptors, and I I assume they're going to be able to close it out. So I would say that's pretty much a done deal series. Um, you know, for Brooklyn to win the first game, like I said earlier, that kind of made me go, wow, okay, this thing might go six or seven. And it, and it still could. It definitely still could. But I, I, I feel like didn't win game four, which they had – enough of a minor lead well first of all in the second half they had a lead and 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 philly kind of just chopped away at it you know it was nine points then 11 then they got it down to five then it went to eight then they got it down to four and and they chopped away at it and and went the whole route and did you know did actually close it out um some pushing and shoving some playoff basketball i do like the friskiness in this series um, no doubt about it. Game two and game three were basically not winnable at the end of the game. I mean, a buck 45 uh, to a buck 23. But that last game, you know, Brooklyn's looking back at that and saying, man, we really needed that, especially having lost back to back games and knowing that that could possibly be your last home game at the Barclays, potentially, if they didn't win tonight. So that, um, that's been a good series, uh, pretty good anyway. The first, I'd say the last two or the first game and the last game were the best. But I did think the Nets, the way the style of the game was going, when I thought the Nets would um, actually it'd be two two right now. That's what I really felt. Jimmy Butler was out because um, you know he stood up for his guy and got. Well, what'd you think of that real quick? You know, Embiid definitely moved his arm fast, you know, in a way that could look like a cheap shot, but he got a ton of ball because you could tell where the ball went after. It's just showing he got a lot of ball. To me, it's like, so you're going to be all tough and stuff off of that? It was just kind of weird for Dudley to come in and just start to push, but it was funny how Butler's first instinct was like, nah, screw this, I'm pushing that, dude. I kind of felt it was a little over the top. It's like he got most of the ball. He didn't slap him across the the face. I mean, I don't know. I, the way the guy reacted, it didn't seem like his teammates needed to come to his rescue that way, but it made for some fun stuff. What do you think of that series so far? Um, and like I said, Game four really felt like that was their best chance to keep this thing going. Other than that, I think it's probably a wrap. Yeah, oh, that that series has maybe had the most media attention out of any of them that doesn't necessarily relate to basketball. Um, I mean, because I remember seeing a story about how Embiid and Simmons caught laughing about elbowing Dudley. And, you know, Dudley is saying, like, you know, screw these guys. Like, that's not a classy way to carry yourself. Or I think it did what he just said that. And then, you know, you had the, like, the milking, milk, uh, missing milk carton sign uh, kind of spoof of Ben Simmons for not being able to shoot the next thing he goes off. I mean, there's been yeah. a little bit of, like, kind of rivalry, which I think is a beautiful thing. You know, nowadays in sports we've become Definitely. so – happy go lucky and be nice to each other you know and you don't get to experience the moments and i and i know basketball's changed but i'll still i'm 34 i still don't recall there still isn't a series like this like when i remember watching growing up um of like tasters and knicks or knicks and heat or like i mean the bulls whenever they played like there was a little more of that kind of more badass side of like i i just that, that you don't see anymore so it's okay to have guys, like, give each other crap, you know, and do, do a little jawing back and forth. Obviously, you never right. want to elbow a dude in the head and kind of, you know, laugh about it, you know, and who, who knows kind of whatever was said. But I, I do think at least – Well, and like that was dude, in the press conference, too. You know, it's not like he sat there and laughed in his face after he elbowed him. They were just – actually, if you listen to the question, they were kind of putting it almost comically like, hey – uh, so what happened with that elbow? He's like, oh, did I catch it with the elbow? I didn't, I didn't realize that. I, I See, I think that's fun banter. 
I, they they didn't bring it up saying, hey, by the way, I didn't elbow him, and they both chuckled. I thought it was actually the delivery of the question, and then Embiid is just a naturally a, a silly guy that likes to talk shit online and on the camera. You know what I mean? He's not a guy that's going to talk shit behind your back. He's going to let you know about it. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, uh, you know, it, 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 all that stuff going on, it, it, it makes for some fun. Um, I just, again, I, I don't think it, basketball hurts having that. Um, I'm, I'm with you again. I, I did think that, you know, this the Nets had had such a phenomenal season. Again, I remember when they were like 7-12 and 12 this year, which I said on our preview show, and then after that, it's kind of like they played like 60% basketball clip winning for the rest of the year. And it was kind of like, well, who the hell is this team? But if you can keep them together as a group, you know, that that is this is a step in the right direction. Like I said, when I was a Warriors fan, I remember having my heart ripped out of me, you know, when they were starting to make progress by the Clippers and the Spurs. Those were back years of being kicked out of the playoffs where it's like, damn, we're making progress as a team, but we still have a ways to go. You know, this could be the start of like saying, damn, if I'm a Nets fan, like, okay, we're we're new to the playoffs. We got to win under our belt. Okay, we, we've not made an embarrassment out of ourselves. So got a ton let's of cap build room. off this. Yeah, oh yeah, a ton of cap room. You're in the East. You know, let's build off this experience. Say, okay, guys, next year again, our goal is to win two or three playoff games, or win the first round series, or have home court advantage, or something like that. So, you know, realistically, there's still so much damn talent. I mean. You got Reddick, you have Embiid, you have Simmons, you have yeah. Butler. I mean, you uh, you know, they, there's a lot of pieces they have. Now, are they going to be able to piece this together to go to the finals? Who knows? Because they have their moments where, they're, again, there's only one basketball and only one team. But um, if you're the Nets, try to find a way to pull this out tonight, maybe make it for game six, make it interesting. But um, overall, yeah, the media has been a little fun for this series. Um, Philadelphia has taken care of business. They probably were a little – Maybe they came into the series thinking, hey, dude, this is going to be an easy series to walk through, and, you know, you get, kind of get surprised and you have to wake up. Um, but, yeah, I, sure. I'm not completely shocked. But it would be cool if the Nets could maybe sneak out one more. I, I don't think they got the persona to get it done entirely. But, again, you're kind of playing with house of money if you're a Nets fan or the Nets team. So you don't have a whole lot to lose, Chris. Yeah, and Simmons, the last two games, he's been on his shit. He really has. He really, really has been aggressive. He's been scoring, not shooting a lot because we know he doesn't shoot a lot. But, sure, you know, I, I saw him like 9 of 10. I was like, oh, shit, man, he's got 22 points? Oh, my God, uh, okay. This this kid is starting to put it together minorly anyway. Uh, but, yeah, I, I do – you know, I'm. I, the only thing I hated about Jimmy Butler is when he uh, – when – when the writing was clearly on the wall, it was just a matter of we're going to move him. Um, when he was at Golden State, and it was during a timeout, and the crowd was cheering, obviously, and they had these, they were waving these towels, and he was waving with them. I was like, man, fuck you, dude. But other than that, other than that, I, I love Jimmy Butler. I'm not gonna, you know, he's the second best Wolves player ever to to play for a franchise. So, so and I loved his first instinct. You know, when you push a guy from behind like that, especially when you're big, and we know Embiid has – that's the only thing that's probably going to keep him out of the Hall of Fame is his injuries potentially, right? So I loved how Jimmy was all up on him like, what is up, dude? He, I'm already pushing. Oh, you push him? I'm going to push you harder. And then he kind of got in his face, and then Dudley just all of a sudden he didn't really want it. You know what I mean? It was pretty funny. But anyway, just to keep it moving as we, you know, sink our teeth into some of this stuff – the Bucks and the Pistons, man, did Milwaukee look every bit the part of the number one overall team with the record, anyway, in the number one seed in the East. 121 to 86, 120 to 99, 119 to 103, and 127 to 104. They got it cooking. No doubt about it, they got it cooking. And wow. And speaking of getting and cooking, now the Pacers, you know, they did good just to get the fifth spot and keep their place. A lot of people thought, much like the Clippers, when they sold, 
we thought, oh, okay, they're, they're selling. And they ma- they managed to, to make the playoffs. Well, the Pacers, you know, they got a man down, and he's their best player. And so it's pretty respectable that they got here. With that said, though, the Celtics just – I mean, not that they're destroying them in these games, but the first game was a throwback game. You're talking about, you know, mid to late 90s, 84 to 74, dude. That That's a throwback. Did KG play in that game, or, or what the hell? They got they got Russell in that game? Like, gosh, 74 points. Uh, but like I said, it's 4-0. It's over. Um, some people are starting to get on the Celtics bandwagon you got to make sure you remember who they're playing. Nothing against Indiana, but they're not a full-strength Indiana. Their best players out. Now, beyond that Clippers game, uh, game one, I should say, the Warriors have taken care of business. Um, the second game was really good, 135. Or, no, that was the second game. Not Game one, they lost. Game two, I mean, what the hell? Now, 132 to 105, and and they ended up closing out the game in game four, and uh, I'm assuming they're going to close it out here tomorrow night. Um, But what the hell happened to the 31-point lead? I mean, that was a a rarity, to say the least. What happened to your squad there, by the way? Toronto's only up 55 to 39. Orlando is making a pushback. Uh, honestly, I don't know. I mean, I, I know there's the moments where, you know, we the dubs go cold from three, and all of a sudden, you know, you let them back in the game. Um, obviously, that occurred. Um, obviously, I mean, the Clippers are known for offense. That They're not really – that's kind of been their MO. That they're not really a defensive-laden team. Um, I do think the psychological part of losing Boogie hurt a little bit. I'm not saying that's the whole story, but you know, when, whenever a team loses a guy, you know that that can be, that can be somewhat of a mental problem. Maybe that's like you know a 10 percent of the pie. Um, the rest of it is probably you know they probably weren't as focused as they should have been. All of a sudden, you yeah. know, super cold. The Clippers go super hot. I mean, there's really no great excuse for it. I mean, you're 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 having one of the best runs of a NBA team in NBA history. So. Um, I honestly, I went to bed that night because I think I probably went to bed around 11 o'clock and I woke up to see my group chat and I was like, wait, wait what? <laughs> are, did, right. Am I reading this wrong? Or I saw the ESPN news slash. I'm like, holy shit, seriously? <laughs> we lost? <laughs> what the hell? So, I mean, obviously it, it, it was a combination of Clippers getting super hot, uh, Warriors getting super cold. Um, again, the Boogie Cousins thing maybe hurt a little bit. Um, since then, though, it was kind of back into, okay, screw y'all mode. Um, they came out game three where, you know, if you're a Clipper fan, you're thinking, maybe we got some momentum. We're going home. We have a, th- we have a one, one series, but that first quarter, I think it was like 32 to 15. And the Warriors were like, dude, we, we gave you that one. Um, you know, good for you. You're lucky. You made us look like fools. Um, uh, we're going to go yeah. back to playing great basketball, whether it be, um, Durant dropping 30 or Clay getting hot or Curry doing his thing, you know, Clay Thompson. I love that. He's such a kind of weird dude that is incredible for sound bites. You know, we talk about like nowadays about athletes, you know, in the Philly series, we're talking crap to each other or whatever and making news clips. Clay is the guy that just kind of throws in random stories and people kind of run with Gapolini and New York. I went stories. to the ocean. I went yeah, to the little, ocean he, and yeah. swam in it. Yeah. He took a dip <laughs> in the ocean and that's why he got hot. You know, he's like, I told Jurepko, it's like, guys, I need, or he's like, dude, I need to go to the ocean. Let's go and do it. So I playing <laughs> volleyball or something on the beach. He's like, dude, I need to go walk in the ocean. So he goes and walks in the ocean and just kind of jumps in. And he's like, yeah, that's why I got hot next game. You know, I need an ocean dip. It's like, okay, Clay, you be you. So that that dude's something else. That's why I love that guy. So, yeah, we're back on business. Obviously, I don't want any other injuries to occur. Um, That was Awful news for Boogie. I was I, I've liked that guy forever, um, so I was hoping he'd be playing throughout the playoffs um, with a serious quad tear. I don't think he'll be back anytime soon at all. I, yeah, I, yeah. from the south, I, it seems and that like could have been it I too, because it wasn't just missing him on the floor. I think they could have been affected by 
wait, what is wrong with him? Like, he's going to probably be out-out. You know, maybe that was in the back yeah. of their head. Like, damn, dude, that sucks. He came off that long rehab. And, and you think, ah, know. shit. You know what I mean? So maybe that was yeah. something to do with it. That was crazy. Yes. Yeah. So, that agree. was really crazy. Uh, that, that was that was tough. And, and you always hate to see the non-contact injuries, whether it's uh, football, basketball, baseball, hockey. Anytime a guy gets hurt and no one touches him, I was like, oh, like that's not no, that's not normal. That something you know something must have went wrong there, and no one was touching him. Uh, nowadays, it's good shit. These guys are in. The non-contact injuries are only the scariest. And Boogie's had a a bad run, unfortunately. Um, you know, I, oh well. I, I guess I'd, I I hope wish him good recovery. I hope he still gets a pretty fat paycheck coming out this season, which I think he will as long as he comes back healthy. Yes, yeah, so the Warriors, I would say, are in. Uh, pretty good business. We touched on Portland, so my two teams in West are doing pretty well. Um, as you kind of hinted at, another series in the West, which is the Spurs in Denver, um, I remember on a preview show, I was like, you know what? Denver has the best home record, which is stayed in the NBA this year. They have the number two seed. They were neck and neck with the Warriors for the one seed all season. It's okay. You got Jokic and Murray, and you got all these people. It's like, by the way, you're playing the Spurs. You right, you're playing have, the Spurs. You know, Ginobili, Duncan or Parker, but they do have that guy named Greg Popovich, who for some reason is still a pretty damn good basketball coach. And, and you know, now you're hearing these names where it's like, he, he now he's going to be the next Ginobili or Pop, Parker or Duncan? Right. It's like, uh-oh. Like, what are we about to begin here? And this series is 2-2. Two to two. Now, I'm not surprised, as I believe I said, I'm like, dude, it's the Spurs. I'm sure Vegas says, okay, Denver's going to be favored because they should be from their win-loss record. And the Spurs this season had moments where they go through offensive grind. You're like, dude, how's this team going to compete with the high-scoring Nuggets? You know, they've had offensive issues all year that the regular Spurs don't have. But, oh, it's playoffs now. And the most comical thing I've seen, and I'll throw this back to you to break down the series in a little more serious way, is the Popovich struggling to call timeout story. Like, there was a clip on ESPN over the past two games. Like, the dude has literally ran up and down the court, jumping <laughs> and doing acrobatics to call a timeout. And it's like, you know, and the, I remember with the one clip, like, he literally ran down to, like, where the Nuggets bench was. And the ref kind of got his face. And it's like, well, dude, I'm, you know, I'm a basketball coach. Like, if you need a timeout, you know, there's only so many ways you can scream. Or if the ref don't see you, you literally do have to run all the way down the damn court. I can't blame Pop, but. They're apparently him calling timeouts or the crowd noise or something. It was kind of comical because Pop's a pretty, I guess you could say, chill, fiery guy. He normally doesn't get too dramatic in that sense of kind of running around. But he's been having issues calling timeouts, Chris, and it was kind of a funny bit. His uh, dramatics trying to call him that, that kind of made me laugh. But aside from the funniness of that, again, we have a tied series. Um, and, again, the Spurs are having these young kids grow in front of our eyes that we didn't quite know about, but what a shock. It's 2-2. Two to two and uh, they're right in the damn thick of this series. They really are. And uh, they – now Denver did win in San Antonio the first time since March 4, 2012. It's the first time wow. they've <laughs> – yeah, that's pretty impressive. Uh, well, on the on the flip side anyway. So, obviously, that was a must. You know what I mean? If they, if they didn't – They'd be in trouble if they didn't if they didn't get that game. When you drop game one at home, it's not a good look, obviously. And um, you know to bounce back, and, and they were in that, that game three as well. And I, I thought they played pretty damn well, um, keeping the Spurs away from them. And it ended up you know blowing them out at the end. But yeah, I mean this thing starts in about ninety minutes. I'm really looking forward to that. And it's an hour gap between Oklahoma. City and Portland too, so probably going to watch the second half of that game once the uh, San Antonio and Denver game's over. But you know, you start to you know, you just, just passing watching Sports Center at the bar I work at, or even home or whatever, and just seeing like numbers of these two guards, you know, and you're like, God dang it, Pop man, he just. Like you said, he just finds a way to develop guys, and it seems like just at the right time, you know. And and I mean, there was a chance that they weren't going to make the playoffs this year, and here they are, two-two, with 
you know, be it an inexperienced team, we did talk about this, like you said, that this wasn't going to be a walk in the park. And, uh, I mean, obviously, it's a must win, right? I mean, they got to win at home tonight, right? If they don't win at home, I think it's a wrap, dude, because I don't see them beating them in San Antonio for the second time since 2012. You know what I mean? Uh, No. I mean, they got to win. Who who would you say, just from kind of a fan standpoint, who do you say has been the best player in the series so far? Because I think that's kind of a little bit of an interesting debate. Um. You know that that is a good debate. Um, and I'd have to, I'd have to dive into it. I mean, as far as all four of them too, because Murray's been kind of hit or miss. Harris hasn't necessarily showed up too much. Jokic has played good, or I thought I think he's played pretty damn good. Um, I mean, Aldridge is delivered. Derosian solid. White has played in spots has played really good. Um I don't know. Who do you think? I mean, I guess on the surface I'd have to dig into all four games, I guess, but I I still think I don't know. That's a good that's a good question. I probably I don't know. I play uh, maybe Maybe it's because of like the newness of him, but white that white star's kind of been like what what like what, he he's been like you know the one taking the kind of the spotlight for Murray you know <laughs> I and he's one of those guys where it's like who the who the, where is he from again you know I didn't know that he was from like a Division two college in in Colorado you know right. it's kind of like how the hell like I guess he played his senior year at Colorado Buffaloes but. His first yeah, three yeah, years were right, yeah. a D a D two school in Colorado. It's kind of like how does Popovich find these people? You know, it's like well, how do they find them? Who? It's one thing to find them, <laughs> and then another thing to oh, by the way, yeah, he's going to be good for the next decade. Like oh, okay, shit, I guess I should yeah. get on this guy here and figure out what's going on. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I just I I I don't know, I don't know. Um, you know, and, and I've to kind of keep going on the same routine as I've talked about the Nets, I think this is, a you know, they're, they're kind of in the, okay, beginner phase. A little more pressure on the Nuggets, okay? Not that they're in the, the graduation step of being a playoff team, but no, I you're right, feel though. that even though we've given the Spurs props and it's Popovich and the white kid and Aldridge and all these things, the, the Nuggets were expected to win the series. If you're a Nuggets fan – I don't think you're taking the Brooklyn Nets approach of, okay, guys, we're in the playoffs. We're happy about this. If we get beat by the Spurs, you know, it's okay. Uh, I'm not saying it's the biggest choke in the world, but I think with the Nuggets have taken a step up to where, guys, this is a series we need to win. We have the young yeah, it's talent a choke. around us to mature. This one it would be a would little be more a of a letdown. Yeah, it, it would be. And even if it's pop, it would still be a little more of a, of a choke uh, per se than – you know, they're they're on maybe step two or step three becoming a better playoff team. So, um, they better come out to play tonight. Uh, that'll be that'll be a fun one to watch. I'm I'm looking forward to that. Um, unfortunately, to wrap up the West, my friend, um, I don't think this one is going to go much longer. Um, the Utah Jazz did find a way to win Game Four. I think mm-hmm. part of it was due to the fact that their court was their regular colors. Uh, we remember like Stockton yeah. Malone, like the purple, right, green, right, and blue. Right, or, yeah. Uh, yeah, or purple yeah, and uh, right. yeah, yeah, green, yeah, green. But and blue, the yeah, game three, well, I guess I, I've kind of had an interesting theme that Chris. I've been talking about a lot, a lot of random shit that doesn't deal with basketball. But after seeing game three's court again, and I get off work, my group chat's like, "Dude, you need to see this court." I'm like, "How bad can it be?" Holy God. If, yeah. <laughs> if you didn't know who the teams were, if you did, if you were an NBA fan and the teams did not have jersey logos on, and you just saw a court and guys playing shirts and skins, you'd be like, "Oh, that's the uh, the, the Phoenix Suns, old school right. Houston Rockets." Like, who the f came up with that idea? <laughs> and the jerseys were hideous too, brother. And of course, they lost Game Three um, last night. Donovan Mitchell. Stepped it up to help his boys win. 
Um, Harden had some couple of cold games where he's been clutch. I mean, the Rockets are kind of kicking it in gear. You know, they're getting ready to take the Warriors on, blah, blah, blah. You know, they're kind of getting things going. Um, but side note, the court was hideous. Uh, <laughs> part two, I do think they wrapped this up in five. I think the Houston just has too much going on. Um, but right. any fun facts on courts or any would you any gut feeling you think this thing goes back to Utah for playing on a turquoise teal red maroon court? What's your gut feeling on that, brother? Well, just based off that, that that'd be cool. But no, I, I don't think it does. I'm with you. I think you're gonna close <laughs> it out. And um Harden, like you said, um uh, he's he's been shoot like two games ago they ended up winning that game one oh four one oh one and game three and he was what was he oh of fourteen I think before he hit a shot three of twenty overall two of thirteen from three but you know what he got to the line sixteen times hit fourteen had six steals what the hell is he doing getting six steals got ten assists <laughs> this squad it took him all year Marshall to 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 get back what they had lost in those two players, uh, just defensive players that could hit shots. Sure. But they are back defensively speaking as well. They are back. Now I'll say this. I do wish that they maybe wouldn't have had such a bad, you know, start. So they could have been a second or third. That way they could obviously meet, or maybe, you know, if they hadn't had the, the whole transition to get better, and get close to what they were last year, they could have maybe made a run at that one seed because ultimately I think that's how you're going to beat Golden State. That's the only way you're going to get get them beat. It, it, just like last year how Houston had it, and then Chris Paul, you know, 6th and 7th, and he could go out right sure. now too. They, that's just Paul. But, yeah, man, I, I the last half of the season, I mean, they've been playing great. And now it's not just Harden, because Harden was carrying him, no doubt about it. Paul was hurt. The big dude was hurt. They, they had some injuries, whatever. Everybody's got injuries. Yeah. Uh, but Denver had him too. But they are getting mightily close to, to last year. But like I said, I, 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 the, the series is over in my mind, and you're really starting to see the team – come around and, and produce in the depth of the team around Harden, man. I, they're, they're looking pretty damn good. This series between Golden State and the Rockets is going to be good again. So one, one quick question to wrap up the West, uh, to go to the preferably losing team, it, is it weird? Like Utah last year seemed like they played Houston better. And Mitchell's a year older. Gobert's a year older. Like I know you're with Quinn Steiner. Why do we seem like we're getting a lesser performance from Utah when we assume they'd be a better team this year? Would you say Rockets are playing too good or the Jazz have regressed a little bit or to make maybe a sophomore slump or something? But I kind of thought we'd see a little more fight because you'd assume that this is a team that's going to get better and maybe not taking a slight step back. Yeah, I agree. Um the way they st- we you talked know, just, about this on it, the last one, the way – go ahead. Chris. No, no I agree. It doesn't seem – you know, it's strange. It is strange. I agree with that. It is kind of interesting. And you, this are these these times that, you know, where you're growing that ultimately maybe just getting, you know, four to one out of this one and, and you just caught the wrong team, wrong time. You know, maybe it's no big deal. Maybe it has, you know, lingering effects – as far as what kind of team you are, um, you know, the young second year dude, he's a good player, but the first half of the year, you know, he was uh, shooting way too much. Now the team is set up for him to shoot a lot. And I think that shared out last year as well. It is set up that way if you look at it. So he has a little bit more like, you know, attempts. So he just does. That's just how they're set up. It's not like Rubio is going to put up, you know, 19 shots a game or something like that. But, yeah, I don't know. It, it could be the matchup. But like you said, they played better in the matchup last year. So, I don't know. I mean, they they did the very similar to last year where they played okay in spots the first 
half, and then they closed, I think, one of the best, if not the best, closes last year. And same with this from the break. You know, ever since the All-Star break, they played pretty damn good. So it's kind of a head-scratcher, and maybe, just maybe, they're starting to figure them out. And the limitations of the squad that we know they have, maybe it's the matchup, maybe it's just they're starting to figure it out, and they're going to have to make some adjustments. Um, because they do depend on such a young player over and over and over again. And so, I don't know. That's a good question. I like I like that you brought that up um, because that's a very true statement. And as we – now, we don't know all of the series. They're not all set. Even if we think, well, this is 3-1, it's over. As we know, it could be 3-2, the team goes, you know – home to game six and they win and all somewhere in a game seven and there's no reason sure. to fully preview and predict but we do have um some things figured out right um the boston for instance boston and milwaukee um that's a thing right because they were the fourth seed boston was and milwaukee's the the first seed so that's happening that's happening right milwaukee and boston that's a pretty damn good series. And question for you, are we ready to jump on the bandwagon? Or, or maybe we had one one foot dragging and, and we were just about to jump off. We were just looking for the, like the right spot to jump and tumble. And now all of a sudden you're like, oh, hold on. It looked really good. Or was it just playing a Pacers team who doesn't have their best player um, – what do, what do you think heading into this? And then the Bucks look flawless. Now they were playing Detroit, who had the worst, um, I think, out of, you know, if we did a top 16, uh, you know, like if we seeded a top 16, I think they were the worst team um, out of the sure. 16. So it kind of worked out that way. So I guess we can't get too lost there. But is Milwaukee a change team since last year? Yeah, because they have a better scheme. They're they have – the scheme fits better, and they have more weapons. Now, they added another big. They've added guards. They've made the right trades at the right time to have the right personnel around him. But they can throw bodies at Giannis, not that it ultimately matters, but maybe you can get a – maybe you can force them to take some outside shots, for Christ's sake, because that's the only way you're going to – hang with them is is make them take 18 footers and out easier said than done where do you stand on this one are we hyping milwaukee too much they don't have a lot of experience and Giannis just finally had his a good run last year in the playoffs whereas the the previous years he had actually kind of faltered a lot of that had to do with him trying to do too much around the squad it's a deeper squad now what do you say because man if this was October, November, you're thinking, oh, yeah, the Bucks will be there. They're probably not going to be number one, but they'll definitely be there. They're going to be better this year. But everybody kind of just handed the East to the Celtics. This is – I say it's going game seven. That's about all I know <laughs> as of right now. The 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 num- <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the numbers that really surprised me was uh, hearing a stat about how Milwaukee found a way to like protect the rim better than anyone in basketball. The whatever defensive scheme they've set up, and I could try to explain it, but I'd probably make a fool out of myself. But they, they've basically made it to the point where we'll let you shoot threes, but you're literally not going to attack us on the rim, which is a little bit of a, I guess, a contradiction the way the NBA is going. Teams have now become more three point heavy. Milwaukee's base the defense that base says, dude, we'll let you jack up some threes, but you're not going to go to the damn rim for an easy layup. And, right. and that's the reason why they've had, you know, the number one team East and they've developed a defense that is really damn good. So again, I'm not yeah. sure, you know, the X's nose of it for, from an analytical standpoint, but this has worked for them the whole season. And so, you know, if you're Boston, now again, I get that they had some hot nights shooting threes against uh, Indiana, but the, the Pacers' defense is obviously not nearly what Milwaukee's accomplished. So from Milwaukee's standpoint, you know, 
can you repeat the defense that gave you the best, one of the best defenses in the regular season? You know, from Boston's standpoint, again, uh, you know, Hayward showed flashes in game four of being like, oh, dude, like that's kind of his Utah style, you know, or is Kyrie going to have his moments where he's doing Kyrie things in the playoffs, you know, or is it Jalen Brown or, you know, who, who's going to step up in that series? That's going to be the interesting question in Indiana. This kind of dude, we can't have a free for all. A dude, you get to shoot, I get to shoot, we all get to shoot, kind of thing. If if you kind of have a little bit of a, well, whoever's feeling hot gets to shoot the ball. I'm not sure that game plan's going to work against Milwaukee. I think Milwaukee is going to score because as bad as they did beat Indiana, the defensive standpoint wasn't, I would say, stunning. I would say from watching the Pacers and Celtics, the Pacers were outshot. I don't. I didn't see necessarily moments of lockdown defense. I guess you could say maybe that game three, third quarter. But even watching game four, Pacers were getting shots off pretty easily. Uh, so it's going to be a matter of you know, okay, if Milwaukee. Excuse me. If Boston's defense isn't that superior as it didn't appear to me to be that great, okay, are you going to be able to out outshoot uh, Milwaukee? I, I don't know. I think Milwaukee is going to be the favorite. Uh, I mean, part of this because I just kind of – some of those guys on the Celtics are having nuts, mainly Kyrie. <laughs> but um, I do think with their defense, the way they've set up the whole year, the fact that they probably have better team chemistry. Um, they don't have the issue yeah, to be sharing sure. the ball. Giannis is going to average his freaking triple-double or, or have a phenomenal game, you know, in and out. Um, I, I just think Milwaukee is a, a better team. But – as you said, as we stated by the fact of the um, – the Celtics do have the playoff experience against them. Now, not necessarily as a team, but they have many players and they just have you know, a little more youth that maybe has a little more overall experience. Um, so, I don't I, – I, I'm going to lean Milwaukee. I think they get it done. I think they're the better team. I think the home court will help. Um, but, again, this is the biggest series Milwaukee's played as a basketball team. In, right. What seventeen, eighteen years? I think it was eighteen years. You know, some crazy number. Uh, so, will the butterflies affect them a little bit? Maybe. You know, if you know, a lot of times the NBA playoffs. I'll, I'll do this. And I'll throw it back to you. We name okay, name me the top five players in the series. You know, who who? Uh, how many people from one team are going to be in the top five? Well, after Giannis, who I'd say is number one, who is the next Milwaukee guy that you name? You know, you know, I'm not yeah, before sure. Before you get, if, yeah, that's true. Before you get done with the Celtics, yeah, that's true. Yeah, is there? It a takes a while. It's a top long five? list. <laughs> yeah. So, despite not. everything I just, despite everything I just said about matchups and defense and how the teams have schemed, from a true who's better playing street ball on the, you know, playing pick up basketball on the on the street, you know, Boston's got the who's better edge. You know, it's just, is Milwaukee's team concept going to get it done? I think it does. But, again, when you have the only one of the top five players in the series, that's a lot of damn pressure uh, to put on the Greek freak shoulders. And, you know, I, I won't surprise me if he did it, but he's going to need right. a lot of help, Chris, because Boston's going to have guys that have their moments. You know, Kyrie is going to go off one game or whoever on Boston will. So, Giannis is going to need yeah. some support along the way, brother. Yeah, and they're going to have to – Boston's going to have to – to just kind of like they did the last two playoff runs. And at times, especially the way they closed um, and in this series, is just kind of like who's ever got the hot hand, we're riding them. If it's one player, if it's two players, instead of trying to feed everybody, because like we said a couple of times, but this is the perfect, you know, team to say it to, there's only one ball, them and Philly. It kind of does uh, mess up stuff. And that's an interesting point you brought up about, uh, you know, protecting the rim from Milwaukee because, like you said, it, nowadays it's three and D, right? That's what you're looking for around your star players, sure. three and defense players. But it's also three pointers and, and rim runners and driving to the hole. So it's you're either right at the hole or you're shooting a three. That's basically what the NBA is now. And if you can take out one of those and the lower percentage. You know, and the the higher percentage for you defensively, the lower percentage for the other team to shoot threes. No matter what team it is, really, uh, even Golden State, Houston, it's still a lower percentage. Um, sure. 
that's a that's a hell of a that's that's pretty interesting. However, because this series is going to happen, I'm ready to predict it, and I'm going with the Boston Celtics um, in in six at home. They're going to close it out. They got the better. I, I mean, I don't know if they got the better coach, but they're more experienced. They've shown that they gel in the playoffs with a, a variety of parts these last couple of years, if you think about it. And so I'm going with Boston in six. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes to seven at all. Uh, I'm just thinking they'll close it out at home or whatever. But I'm going to say one way or the other, the Celtics with the talent, with the experience, Experience and with the experienced coach too, they've kind of been doing this now the last couple of years. So I'm going Celtics uh, to to win the series. Are you are you going to go Milwaukee? Or are you going to go? Celtics? I'll take I'll take Milwaukee in seven. I think both teams defend their home court. I think it could be one of those where the home team doesn't lose. Now, I wouldn't bet that necessarily, but I I would I wouldn't be surprised if we have you take home court, you take home court back and forth, back and forth, go to seven. Flip the quarter, let's go. So I'll take Bucks in seven. Um, I, I think the home court, uh, obviously for the Celtics, you know they got just kind of as that old school mentality court. You know, I just I, I don't think they lose the game, but I think Milwaukee's also going to be pretty jacked for an experience they've not been able to experience in a long time either. So yeah, I'll take uh, Bucks in seven. And it's this is not a current score because I'm on ESPN and ESPN's always a little back. But it's 27 to six. Philly's up on Brooklyn, and they were up on them just a second ago, even more. So I'm thinking that they're going to go ahead and, and, and close this one out. Uh, but hey, it could <laughs> slap you. me in the face. It could slap. It could come back. I mean, it happened to Golden State. It can happen to anybody. But I'm going to say yeah, that no. Philly. You know what I mean? I'm going to say that Philly yeah. is going to do it. Then it's Toronto and Philly. Where do you stand with that, my friend? That's a hell of a this. East, this is what I've been waiting on the East right here, dude. These are the teams yeah. that I wanted in, and this is what I wanted in the East. These top four teams, and it looks like that's where we're going to get, Marshall. Okay, again, well, we'll if we're playing pickup basketball, who gets picked first? Ah, uh, you know, Jimmy I mean, Butler. If, if we're talking on you, you better. You better pick Butler. He's going to swing on you if you don't. This, this might sound a little bit crazy, but I mean, I think game one is more important than regular because, my God, do the Raptors not have to win true. game one? And, and, and now Very you're playing true. a team where when you go to when you go to Philly, this isn't going to be like the magic, like oh, you know, we we had a good run against yeah. in Toronto, but now now we're going to take care of business. Oh hell no. It, if you go down 0-2 to Philly, let's just say hypothetically, now you're in trouble. And the, for whatever reason, Kyle Lowry in game one is just not a good oh, basketball God. player. No. But you, you can't Horrible. you can't afford to to take off a game one. And it's got to drive those fans freaking nuts. And I know and, and, and in reality, Chris, it goes in the players' heads too. Like this isn't one of those like just weird coincidences, you know. Yeah, like, well, like we said in our pre uh, pre playoff show, Toronto fans, my God, it's got to be so heartbreaking to see a team that does great almost every year, but then when you're waiting to reflect on a great season and treat your fans to a home playoff game, you, you it's like you forgot what you did. And so, I mean, my my gut tells me Philly's going to win Game One because Toronto will do what Toronto does and lose it, and now <laughs> Philly's got essentially the home court advantage from that point on. And again, if we're drafting five guys for pickup basketball, I'm not sure who on Toronto gets picked. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, you're you're taking Butler, you're taking Embiid. I, Simmons, I guess that's kind of you know depends on your choice of a guy. But whatever the case is, you know, who who on Toronto can get hot like Reddick and shoot threes? Or, you know, I'm drawing a blank on the dude they brought in from the Clippers. Uh, Philly brought in. Uh, yeah, Harris. Her, yeah, Her. yeah so, I, and him and Reddick just I, went off too in the last yeah, game. So, just went off. Yeah, I think honestly, Chris, and I hope Toronto wins. I, I just, I don't know. My the soft side of me says being a sports fan, and me a guy that's seen suffered like you know being a Vikings and Cowboys fan. Yeah, you know, sometimes you just kind of want good stuff to happen for sport fans. 
I kind of want Toronto to go to the finals. I think those fans just kind of just be a cool story. But I do think with the fact that I think they're going to lose game one, I think that's too much of a hole for a series that is probably pretty damn even. Um, so I think that's the the nail in the coffin. I will take, uh, I'll, well, I'll take Philly in six. I just think that losing game one is too big of a thing you can't do. And that's kind of why they always got in trouble against LeBron or whoever. You know, you, you dig yourself a yeah. hole and your home court advantage goes from being a great place where you have like 8,000 damn fans outside your arena waiting to explode. And it kind of kills the vibe. And I think that's going to happen again for Toronto, unfortunately. Jimmy's going to get in a fight with the whole crowd outside, too. Um, I'm calling. He, he better have some uh, Game of Thrones dragons <laughs> to, seriously. to help him out. You know? <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, just tear it to mow him down. Um, you're right. No, I, I, here's what I'm calling. I'm calling that Toronto somehow, some way wins game one, but then the bus Whoa. kill – Goes away. I know. I'm going out on the ledge. However, they lose game two. In fact, they get their ass oh. kicked in game two. So all that happiness and oh my god, we won game one. Oh my, oh we got our ass kicked 132 to a 111 in game two. If you go back to Philly 1-1, it's over. The series is over. That's that's my. Yeah. I mean, I, I really think that I'm with you. Game six. Um, they better win one of those first they'll they'll win one of the first games. I, I, I got them winning the first game finally. Um but I want Toronto to lose because there's a chance that they could give us Lowry and we could just overpay him for a short amount of time and then we trade him Wiggins, Air Canada. You see the you see where I'm going with this dude? Maple, the Maple <laughs> yep. Air yep. Maple? Like that's where I'm going with it. Okay, so okay. Uh, okay. we can't we can't do the, the the Nuggets and Spurs right now, you know, advancing and all. We can't do that. We can't do that. No, and, two, and two I series. ain't chasing my Portland boys either. I don't want to jinx right. them. That's that's a good point because, like we said, if they lose tonight, it's it's going to be tough, dude, to go back because that place is nuts sure. for game six. Um, however, yeah. we do have the other series we feel good about anyway. Um, with Houston mm-hmm. up three to one, they're at home tonight or tomorrow night. Um, I'm going on a ledge and I'm picking Golden State. I can't believe it. No, I'm picking Golden State, but I do think be a six to seven game series. Let's put it that way. I could see them closing out in Game Six on the road. I don't think they're a one game and done. I think they can push it to six. Maybe even seven as long as Harden in game six doesn't have, doesn't have that. So what club are we going to tonight? You know, that type of thing where he's just like, okay, cool. yeah. I'll put up 30. I'll put up, uh, you know, 30 shots and, you know, hit four of them and just look lackluster. Um, but, you know, they have a lot more depth, so maybe he won't be as worn out, even though this is one of the seasons where you're like, this is the season he should be worn the fuck out, dude. With all those 50 and 60 points. I mean, this guy, oh, man, it's funny. But, yeah, I'm going Golden State in uh, six or seven-ish, something like that. But I could see it in six. Yeah, I I, I don't know. I, I, the only uh, tough thing is this year for Golden State, there's been just so much just seems to be soap opera damn drama. But, unfortunately, that that normally doesn't truly impact how you play on the court. You can only find a way to get it done, but I mean, KD is gone. You know, they, they, he, he'll be out the door next year, and I, I think that's caused some divide. And, you know, is, is Clay leaving? Is Dre leaving next year? I think there's a lot of unanswered questions that have caused some issues this year, but still, when they turn on the switch, I mean, you know, again, you, you lose game two, you come out to Clippers, and you're up 32 to 15. Um, I, I was in awe. I saw when they were playing, I think it was game three against the Clippers, they ran the same set play four times in a row, and they got a quality shot off each time in the half court. And they literally made the Clippers look like they were a college-based defense. And these are like grown men playing basketball in the playoffs. Like it, it, it was, it was an offensive set ran so effectively. Kirk called the same damn play, and and there was no stopping it. So when they truly do get clicking, the, there's no one that can really slow that team down. 
you know, I, I maybe their bench isn't quite what it's only been, but you know, you kind of have those new guys like with McKinney, and you're you know you're developing some younger core because we maybe will lose a couple of people this year. But I, I'm with you. I like the Warriors too. Um, I could. If this is this this is the number one games on the road. So uh, I will take Warriors and uh, I'll take Warriors and six. I had to put out the violin music because, you know, the whole team is the whole the the band is breaking up, and oh man, that's too bad. I'll tell you what. Yeah. Right now, I wish what the Toronto Raptors have done in the last four years. I wish the Timberwolves could have done that just in a in a four year stretch. That's how happy I would be. Um, I don't give a shit if we're losing every game one or not. Hey, hey get to the conference final twice, I'm in. Um, but anyway, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're right. And like I said, we can't do that other that other series. But um, we'll be back quicker than 12 days. That's for sure. We'll definitely be back here soon. And by the way, if this is your first time listening to the NBA Playoff Banter Podcast, we do this. I mean, sometimes it could be four or five days later. Sometimes it could be eight days, whatever it is. But we're going to do this April, May, June, all the way through the finals. Then we'll have a NBA draft show. And then probably one to two, more than likely two, because of all the activity that's going to be happening in July for free agency. So stay with us all the way through July. Just so you know, I had to, had to let them know. All right, well, on that note, um, I, I hope that we don't have to break down a game seven because that, that would be pretty damn tough for Damian Lillard. Uh, like you said, the whole crowd would be nuts. But we, we have a pretty good feeling on how these series are going to go. Um, but you're, you're going to get some good basketball tonight. You get to watch the Denver series. You get to watch the uh, Portland series. And, yeah, we'll be moving on to round two. And as Chris said, this is the um, maybe the best Eastern Conference playoffs we've had in a while where it's not a, a guaranteed, hey, LeBron's going to win it. You know, we have four teams that all have a legit chance. If you're a fan, you can think, hey, my guys could win the East, no matter if you're Philly, Toronto, Boston, or Milwaukee. You know, I'm sure there's a little bit of a favoritism in there, but all those teams have a fighter's chance. So we'll be back to break down the end of round one and some involvement in round two. As always, thanks for listening. I hope you have a great day. The boys are out tonight. Peace.